can you can you put me where I can see myself live on the camera? Oh, that'll do it. Okay. Oh. Okay, so we're live. Can you guys see it? We'll get the hang of this, huh? Yeah. Cool. All right. So I can go? Yep. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Hey, hey, hey. Live stream number two. Just like last week, totally live. Don't know what I'm going to talk about today, but I've had a few things on my mind. Um, so we've had a little over a few thousand views on the last YouTube. I don't know how long that'll end up being up there. Um, I'm assuming it's still up. I don't even know. But given the controversial topics, uh, we'll see how long it goes. So <clears throat> been doing a lot of sessions, um, Zoom sessions as well as private sessions. And a lot of the same concerns coming up. I want to branch out and talk to a broader audience other than just the LDS community. But this is basically to the religious communities in general. And then those not affiliated with religion hopefully can identify as well, initially speaking about things. But, but since I used to be LDS, you guys will notice a, a huge shift in my energy. On Friday, July 9th, I will be doing a free Zoom session, Zoom call at 6 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. As for anyone and everyone, again, it's free. I'm going to talk about my excommunication from the LDS Church. What led up to that why they exed me or why they claimed they exed me and then what's happened since I got excommunicated. So having said that, I'd like to welcome all those from the LDS Church that are joining this podcast, either live or later recorded, including church headquarters. So let's touch briefly on some of what's coming on July 9th. The real reason the LDS Church excommunicated me, well, I was accused of using my gifts, what the state president called my craft, specifically energy work, and I guess you could say, some people call them psychic gifts, my ability, clairvoyant, my spiritual gifts, which I was born with, and then as time has gone on with my near-death experiences, the veil has continued to thin, um, accused of using those gifts, my craft, and the LDS Church as a platform. Let me be very clear. Part of my mission, a huge part of my mission, was to wake up the LDS community at the time I wrote my books, I did not know that I was not awake to the true condition and the history of the LDS Church, the Mormons. I will not call them the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints except to address them here as their official title. And the reason I won't is because I have now awakened more, I won't even say fully, because I know I'm not, to their craft, their cunning, their deception, their lies, and their cult. Now, how can I do the Julie Rowe show for, I don't know, three years or however, and talk about things like the gospel of Jesus Christ and how Members of the Quorum of the Twelve, that you will be safe if you follow the majority. That is what I was taught by my dad. That is what was taught to me by leaders in the church growing up. Both young women's leaders, Relief Society leaders as an adult, priesthood leaders. Yes, that's in quotes because I don't believe them anymore. That... 
they were the one and only true church, that the other religions, the other churches had bits of truth and lots of deception, and that Joseph Smith had restored the gospel and all the keys of the priesthood to the earth. I will state boldly this is a lie. It has been made known to me for years, um, the majority of my adult years actually, prior to even going public with my story, that not all the keys are on the earth. I've seen the lies since I was about 13. In fact, when I was 13, I read the Book of Mormon for the first time. I read the Book of Mormon six times in high school, and the Bible covered to cover twice. You could say I was not a normal teenager. I wanted to find truth even at a young age. My dad was called as a high priest in the LDS church when he was 27 and set apart as a member of a stake presidency. From then on out, he served in high councils no matter where we moved. Sometimes he served as a gospel doctrine teacher, most often on the high council. That's what they did as an LDS chaplain. He was a Mormon chaplain. You could say the argument could be made that if anyone on this planet, they did their best brainwashing job on Julie Rowe. But I have awakened to the brainwashing. I have rebelled against the system. I have awakened to my past lives and identities. Memories I've had and communications I've had from my earliest recollections, even at the age of three, four, and five years old. So I have known my whole life they were not teaching the full gospel. And in my young adult years, when I started to question more so what was going on, because the LDS church threatened my dad that he would not have a job because my parents were getting divorced. And the policy was at that time in 1993 that you must be married in the temple, sealed in the temple to be an LDS chaplain. They changed the policy for my dad. This was when it was solidified in my brainwashing to follow the majority of the 12. And here is partly why. I watched for 18 months as my parents both struggled tremendously related to their faith crisis related to the church. My mom left the church. My dad stayed, although for a year and a half, he wondered if he would have a job. And he cried to me in a hotel room about what the church was doing. And I was the one that was strong and said, Dad, just trust the Lord. My dad would later say things to me and my siblings as well as to my mom about how because of my mom, he would never hold a high calling in the LDS church again. A couple of years ago, he petitioned, right around the time actually that I got excommunicated, he petitioned the LDS church at church headquarters all the way up to President Nelson to have their ceiling canceled. It had never been done even though they've been divorced for uh, 26 and a half years. My mom was devastated because even though they weren't married, she still felt like she wanted her family still together. She sent me an apology text saying she was sorry that she had failed me in this and that she could not provide a sealed family. You want to talk about bullshit? This is when I woke up more and realized Neither of my parents understood the concept of eternal families, unconditional love, and what ceilings are and aren't. To be sealed unto Christ versus a man or a woman to each other, covenants versus contracts, 
covenants with the Lord versus contracts with Satan. Feeling stuck and like a kept abused woman, which I can identify with, instead of feeling free, truly loved unconditionally and not treated with disrespect. So you're getting a little foundation. I've talked briefly on this and I will talk more extensively on this and how it has played into my mission. Having awakened over the last 17 years to more of my identities, as I have come to remember more of my past probations, as many of you are, because we are completing a cycle, cycles within cycles of karmic cycles and relationships. Many of you are awakening to your spiritual gifts. Your veils are thinning as we go through more veils, as portals are cleared, as some dark portals open and light portals also increase. And you are questioning everything you've ever been taught, whether it be from your parents, your school teachers, your coworkers, your aunts, your uncles, your churches, religious institutions, colleges, grandparents, or society at large. This is a time of great confusion, but it presents an opportunity for great growth. Some have said that I am everything from a pawn of the devil to a tool of the adversary. To this, I refute that energy and I say to you, Mark my words. I do not work with Satan. I am a true messenger. I will complete this mission. I know at least most of what I think I understand. And this is why these people that say they are awake, whether it's to the prepping movement, UFOs, religious corruption, politics, whatever this, there's this big awakening. We are in an awakening, but no one on this planet, including Lucifer himself or Cain, are fully awake. Only those in the highest realms of heaven, even Elohim, the gods and goddesses, who are in ascended uh, spheres and, and not having not like having condescended into other dimensions, terrestrial planes and others to help us others ascend. They are fully awake because they are not blocked by telestial or other dark energy that is, that is in these lower spheres and realms. I do not pretend to be someone I am not. I do not make up stuff. I can only tell you what I know as I wake up to the truth that I know. And I can only tell you some of the reasons that I know it. In large part because I do not have language to describe to you what I am often shown or that I remember. I do the best I can to communicate, but I am very limited in this capacity, in this body, on this plane. Therefore, in hopes that you will understand more of the individual plan that you have created, a lot of people wanna blame God for their lives, for their circumstances, for their choices, for even the things where they have been severely mistreated. And it is not his fault. You choose. You chose then, you choose now, whether you consciously are aware of it or not. Every day, every second, every moment, we choose. And often our agency is stolen from us and we are victimized. 
that is not God's fault. Let's put blame or credit even to those who are accountable for that, which is those who are actively serving darkness, whether they realize it or not, whether they are consciously aware of it or not, whether they accept the truth of that or not. The Luciferians are the ones who seek to thwart God's plan and your individual plan of salvation. This is an individual plan because you helped design and create it and you still do. Every choice you make has energetic consequence and reaction. Energy is not created or destroyed. It is simply changed in form. Therefore, it must go somewhere, whether that is creation energy that can be um, accomplished through a sex act or creation energy by drawing some kind of picture. It's a different, it's all creation energy. There's just different forms of creation, even dance or playing the violin or some other musical instrument. Construction work. The list goes on and on and on with the gifts and talents that each of us have been given, not only on this planet, but in multiple universes. We are designed to be divine creatures. Many, many species are on this planet and on other planets. I speak to all of you. Whether the mortals on this planet think I'm crazy or not, I know and I see you guys in other dimensions, inner earth, middle earth, the skies, the heavens, and on the surface of this planet, as well as other planets, galaxies, subgalaxies, universes. I know that part of my mission is to help wake people up in all locations and to help Christ fulfill his mission which is to atone and to gather the people, the family, every creature, culture, creed, species, alien, foreign, or at home, into an eternal family and locations of safety. These are the true cities of light and the places of refuge. Not the church camps for the LDS church, not the Episcopalian camps or the Baptist camps. You will find some measure of peace there in a telestial sphere during tribulations, but you will not com find complete safety spiritually or physically. It is no different than what you are going through now, other than we will have mass chaos at a greater scale with alien forces coming to this planet, both from the sky, land, and sea. When I say alien coming to the United States, I mean foreign nations, both from this planet and from elsewhere. I speak to those who follow, I guess you consider alternative news media and other outlets, other voices that speak of truth even those that follow um, everything from uh, really the Avenger movies, the Marvel, the DC comics, Flash, like there's so much that they are putting into movies, into TV shows. They are putting it right in our faces. This is not sci-fi. This is real. And then they put stupid shit in there to make you think it's just pretend. And the reason it resonates is because a part of your soul recognizes some partial truth in there. Some of you recognize me. You might recognize my eyes, my face. It's not exactly how you remember me in pre-mortal or how you see me from a past life or probation. But there is a familiarity. Some of you hate me innately, and there are reasons for that. And some of you love me and you don't understand why 
or how you know me. I will just say, if you love me, there are reasons for that. Take a look in the mirror. If I have enemies, we have a past. Somewhere our paths have crossed, if only minutely, and you chose to go against the light. I will say that again. I am not dark, and if you have problems with what I have to say, somewhere in your path you have chosen to believe lies. This is your wake-up call. This is me asking you to take a look in the mirror to see if you have mirrors, holograms, inductions, machines, mechanisms, devices, trapped emotions, other weapons, heart walls, and other blocks that are keeping you, earmuffs and eye blockers, even weird like energetic sunglasses and shades that are keeping you energetically from being able to resonate at a higher vibration, either through your physical eyes, your spiritual eyes, which would be the third eye, or your ears. Your crown chakra, brow chakra, throat chakra, heart chakra, sacral chakra, root chakra, the sister chakras, and those energy systems and bodies that are tied to both you and me. To some, this is familiar language. To others, this sounds like a foreign language and crazy talk. You can go and watch a movie like Transformers and love it or Terminator, but you think I am crazy. You guys that think I'm crazy can keep on thinking that because you have blinders on. It will change nothing I do other than motivate me again and again and again to do everything I can to help those who will listen. And those that won't will pay the consequences for those choices. And I'm 100% okay with that now. I did not used to be. I used to have terrible night tremors and nightmares about the devastation I see going on on this planet and that I see going forward. I still have them, but when I wake up now in the middle of the night or throughout the night or in the morning or the next day and I process that, I can see more because I've gone through more veils. Even as we speak, some of us are going through those veils and feeling more clear. I can see some of the energetic bodies, past, present, and future. I can see that even though someone in physical form right now looks completely innocent in their choice and consequence of getting something like the vaccine, their spirit and even their soul body is contracting with a dark agenda. They have been convinced either by blindness, willful disobedience, sometimes just mere blindness, to go against the light and to follow a Luciferian agenda, which will cause increased turmoil on planet Earth. I was asked in 2004 during my first near-death experience more like I was reminded of the covenants I made with the light side before I came to earth in this body. I was born in 1973. I am 48 years old. And before I came, I was reminded in 2004 at the age of 31 that I had made covenants with the Lord, even God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, as well as Joseph Smith, George Washington and a bunch of other founding fathers and other major leaders in history, women as well, that I would come to this earth, go through certain trials, learning experiences as this um, 
coming and getting a body is like school. It's for our learning and growth. And I agreed that I would do that. And I agreed that I would have that near-death experience as well as the others I've had. You do not go to the other side of the veil without extreme physical pain. At least I didn't. And it was the same when I came back. I have been earning my stripes. I mean that literally and figuratively. I agreed, and they reminded me in 2004, that in approximately nine Earth years, I was to share my story, to begin sharing my story, to write books, and to speak publicly about what I ex had experienced on the other side of the veil for two and a half days. And I have done that. My first book, A Greater Tomorrow, came out in May of 2014. I wrote it in six weeks. The second book, The Time Is Now, came out in October of 2014. I wrote it in eight weeks. And a series of books after that, I have now produced 13 books, some of them based on podcasts I did on The Julie Rose Show. I have done my best to wake up the LDS community I am still going to keep working at doing that by exposing the LDS cult. I was asked by dozens of media while interviewing, trying to expose the darkness of Chad Daybell, murdering Tammy Daybell and Lori's two kids, Tylee and JJ. You will notice on my Eyes Open channel that I came out publicly saying right away and also on the first news interview that I did with Salt Lake that Chad Dable was innocent. Later told the public on Inside Edition that he had sexually assaulted me. That was not easy. Still not. And even though he had done that to me, I still did not believe that I could know a murderer or that he would do something like that. There are all kinds of rapists and sexual assaults that go on on this planet and it doesn't make them murderers. And I could not fathom that Chad Dabo was capable of that. But within three weeks of Tammy's death, she came to me. I was in a hotel on a business trip for the Greater Tomorrow Relief Fund, GTRF which is my nonprofit organization that I started in the fall of 2015. It is emergency disaster relief and the rescue of human trafficking victims all over the universe. And I realized when Tammy came to visit me and she came and she said, Julie, tell the truth of what you know about Chad what you know about Lori, anything, just tell the truth, which I had planned to do. But Tammy herself, when she was on the other side of the veil, was greeted with by family, and she was very happy for the first few weeks. They have veils within veils in heaven as well, in other parts of the universe, which is why when people have near-death experiences, they have different accounts of what happened to them. And based on their religious affiliations, they have those experiences. There's all kinds of reasons. I'll probably do some podcasts on that, why people have different types of near-death experiences um, and why there's some similarities in some and not in others. So Tammy, what I could see was Tammy was still veiled. And then they unveiled her and allowed her to come to, um, if you will, back to earth through other portals, dark, dark dimensions to come and to minister to her kids and to communicate with those in her family, extended family, and that hotel room. She regularly communicated with me for about six months, and off and on after that for another six months. I am a clairvoyant. I do have psychic ability. Some people call 
people like me, mediums. So she let me know. She did not come right out and tell me that she'd been murdered. I don't even know if Tammy knew at that point how she had died and that she had been poisoned. And all I heard from the other side was, tell the truth of what you know in every interview. And everybody that wants to interview you, just, just be open, which is what I did. And the media will attest to that if they're being honest. I interviewed with 46 outlets, a couple hundred hours at least of media interviews. And what's out there is very minimal, which is why the public does not know to this day where I stand, which is one of the reasons I still get harassed. And also when I was asked if Chad was starting a cult, I had no idea. I lived in the Kansas City area. I would travel to Idaho to do my relief work. I was not familiar with what he was doing. I had a few contacts that told me he was speaking at some homes. I just thought he was talking about his visions of what he saw coming to Idaho. I knew quite a bit about the lists and things he was making, but I did not know about all the other stuff. And we did not agree on it. And it is part of why we separated our friendship. I don't want to waste a whole lot of time on Chad Daybell, but I feel the need to clear some of that up. Maybe I'll do an entire live podcast on Chad Dayball and everything I've told the media for the last couple of years. One of Lucifer's attempts is to get people desensitized and not to believe truth. And Chad Dayball knew some truth and most of it he got wrong, but he knew just enough to hit the prepping community, spiritual gifts, the LDS community, and a whole lot more. Something else that I was asked the last six months of interviewing is when it started. People would ask me in the media if the LDS church was a cult. They would come right out and ask me that. And every time I would say no because I was not awakened to that. Even though I was so angry at what they had done and how I'd been so abused so many times over my life related to patriarchy in my home that I grew up in and in my marriage and in my other relationships with LDS men, not all of them, but quite honestly, most and in relationship to false beliefs that I had awakened to related to teachings of the LDS church. I still did not call them a cult because I still was not awakened to really the magnitude of my own abuse at the hands of their brainwashing. And now I want to publicly say the LDS church is the largest cult on the planet. Should we end it there? I am 48 years old. I will be 49 in January. I am a middle-aged mother of three who has had to travel with security since going public with my story from everything from creepy men at events to multiple death threats by both men and women, including the Illuminati, the puppet masters, the Luciferians run by not only the Rothschilds, but Lucifer himself. So you guys that want to call me crazy can call me crazy all day long. I don't care. I know what I know. I know who I am. I know some of who I've been and I know some of who I will be. I am stepping in to more of my own energy. I am clearing my own karmic cycles and patterns of abuse and impure energies the best I can, as fast as I can, and helping as many people do the same. I petition you to look at yourself, to look at your relationships, to get right with the Lord, not with some church and organization. And if you have inconsistencies in your behavior, your authenticity, 
and hypocrisies within your own system because you have a belief system that does not match the religious organization or other organization with which you affiliate. This is causing illness in your body and discontent in your system. Your autoimmune, your cancers, your mental illnesses, your heartaches, all tied together. You can and will be healed when you clear out your karmic shit. The trapped emotions that continue to fester within your system that are attracting more of the same energy can and will be cleared so that you can ascend to a higher vibration if you choose it. Not by getting some blessing, preset blessing from someone who claims they have the keys. But I do promise you this. There are light priesthood keys from Elohim that were given to Joseph and Hiram Smith that were taken when they left because they knew what was going to happen. They did not give all the keys because even then Joseph knew he was visionary and knew who Hiram was and knew who Brigham was and Orson Pratt and Orson Hyde and Porter Rockwell and a bunch of other people. And he knew the ones that would stay true and he knew the ones that would betray. And like me, he said certain things to certain people, whether they were going to betray or not, whether they worked for the light set or not, to help bring them along in their missions, their life plans, and in truth. Knowing that the very people he taught some of the most sacred doctrines to were going to twist that doctrine and later blasphemy God's name with unrighteous dominion, false teachings and beliefs, and justification for everything from polygamy and adultery to murder itself. The LDS Church has, quote unquote, recorded and exposed Joseph to justify their own behavior. Joseph was not only not a pedophile, he was not a polygamist. He did teach higher doctrines of gods and goddesses being married to each other, which is true. Common sense says if you've had past lives, you've been married to at least one person, most of us, and many of us several times to different people. That does not mean he had sex with 14 year olds. And the, the twisted history is by conspiring men and women who want to justify and cover their own murderous, adulterous acts. I will spend the rest of my existence defending truth. And if later it is unveiled to me that I am wrong, like I was wrong about the LDS brethren, then I will own that as well. But where I am today is where you just heard me. Joseph is a general of generals, and he will be returning to the earth. He is not on the earth right now, although there are groups, men claiming to be both Hiram and Joseph. They are false prophets and false messengers, but they will be back. As will Christ. As will thousands of translated beings, not only from the city of Enoch, but from other locations in the heavens and other planets. We will have those come from middle and inner earth. And we will have everything from cloned to modified to harvested individuals one day walking the surface of this planet at greater magnitude in broad daylight. We are already surrounded by them. We have mixed bloods, which is where we have everything from the RH negative to RH positive. The O, we all... Think about why we have different blood types. There are some common sense things. Truth will be made known at greater magnitudes. They say we are in the information age. You guys, we haven't seen anything yet. Stay tuned for more live broadcasts. I'll be posting it on my Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, 
Pinterest, and Twitter accounts. I look forward to seeing you again. I want only what is best for you. I witness and testify that Jesus is the Christ. Put your foundation in Christ. Quit judging me and everybody else, but learn to discern true messengers. The other thing is I put certain music out there to help me and others clear. I recognize that in many people it can lower the vibration. We do that to pull the dark energy to the surface so that it can clear. There's a lot more that goes into energy work that most practitioners do not know or do. You can ask questions as to why I know it and how I know it and who instructed me with that to help rescue people in multiple uh, levels, layers, realms, and dimensions. The pits are real. I used to put a lot of people in the pits and now I try to pull them out to rescue them to get them to higher dimensions. It is possible. The lie that was told and is told by the LDS Church comes from Lucifer, that the third cannot ever be redeemed. That is a lie. I see unclean spirits, which are basically just people who have passed on that have not gone to the light. We rescue them all the time in multiple dimensions. And if you have parts of your soul that have either been stolen or sold or kidnapped, those can be rescued too. I do know how to do soul retrieval and soul, heal, soul healing. If you have questions about this, you can join my Zooms or you can schedule personal sessions over the phone or what we call a proxy session, which is where I will work on you remotely. And I just do that on my own time. You can go to Wasatch Wake Up. That's my new website. My old website is julierowprepare.com. My new website is Wasatch Wake Up. W-A-S-A-T-C-H W-A-K-E-U-P dot com. Wasatch Wake Up. In the meantime, know that I'm thinking of you. I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve Elohim, gods and goddesses, both male and female energy, who are the true ones that give life force to this planet. And without them, we would not exist on planet Earth. I send my love to those who have asked me to do this. I give them my word that I will continue to do the best that I can. As an imperfect mortal woman, I send love and I ask for additional light and protection for those who are listening to this at this time. I love you guys. I hope you have a great day.